good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. And of the Son of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the high priest who intercedes for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did. For through the healing paschal remedies, you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia, came forward and debated with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witness who testified, This man never stopped saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus, the Nazarene, will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread, when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? 
Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one whom he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. So while listening to the first reading from Acts, um, you're getting the point of the story if you had a sense of deja vu. If you had a sense in listening to this story, you say, haven't we been here before? And by saying that, I'm, I'm saying more than hoping that you remember Bible stories and you say, oh yeah, I recall the story of St. Stephen. You know, because the deeper meaning of what's happening in this description of Stephen in the Acts is that we've been here before in the life of Jesus. Recall in John's Gospel where Jesus once says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. Now just think about that first part. I'm the way. That's not just a moral kind of statement like I'll tell you what is right and wrong. We're saying the way. He's the very pattern of our lives. And that's what we see repeated now in Stephen's story. Notice how Stephen's described in in, He's filled with grace and power. He's working great wonders and signs. When you hear that, if I never put in the name Stephen and I just said those adjectives, you say, oh, this is a story about Jesus. Exactly. This is Stephen filled after Pentecost with the Holy Spirit. He has Jesus' risen spirit inside of him. Last Thursday at the Mass, Uh, In the gospel, Jesus says that the Father does not ration the gift of the Spirit. Think about that. Now, my experience, our experience of the Spirit is we always feel it's rationed. We're just getting a little bit. No, that's Pentecost. The gift of the Spirit is like you have everything of the risen Christ given to you. And that's why we see Stephen as one who opened himself to it. He is now filled with grace and power, working great wonders and signs. That's inspiring. But at the same time, the deja vu continues because what's the response of the people, the mob? They reject, they resist. This is the pattern of Jesus' life now in Stephen's, and this is the pattern for you and me. To the extent that you have received the Spirit and you're filled with His goodness and wonders, you're going to do great things. And there are times when even the mob will resist the good that you're doing. And also the pattern is this way, to flip it, not too long, but to say it, sometimes you and I are the mob. And there are others filled with the Spirit of Jesus, and the pattern repeats we still don't recognize, and we resist. Now, why this is so important in the Acts of the Apostles is they want you to know the pattern of your life. They want you to know how this is your way. Because, yes, someday you're going to be in this church again, and you'll be doing the Stations of the Cross, and you say, I don't want this to be the way of my life, and I don't want it to be mine either. But it happens to you and me, doesn't it? And they have such confidence to say, oh yeah, that'll happen. That's the way. But if you follow Christ there, you will know his resurrection. That's the pattern too. It is customarily that we enjoy on Good Friday to sing, were you there when they crucified the Lord? And we find that very moving, beautiful, and it generally pulls us back to 33 A.D., The truth is, we're here, we're there every day. 
Jesus as the pattern gets repeated in Stephen and it's being repeated in you today. The benefit of knowing this, of having this revealed to us by the sacred text, is then we can monitor our own hearts and our own actions and responses so that we can be more like St. Stephen today and less like the mob. And now let us gather our hearts together as we bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father, confidence of his love and mercy for us. For Pope Francis, may God continue to give him the courage and strength necessary for effectively leading our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, May the promptings of the Holy Spirit guide them in working to protect the sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen away from the church, may they hear the Lord's call to return and partake once again of the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, remembering especially Rose Marie Gryson and Brother Stan Subcheck, for whom this Mass is offered. May they enjoy eternal bliss in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we continue to be witnesses to Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We take a moment now to name any personal needs for the day. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for your Son, who is the pattern of our very lives. Help us to persevere in faith in the times of the Passion, so that we too may be raised up in glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, all, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with all the angelic hosts, Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, the third one, Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ, and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Columkill, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite you now to pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts, living now we Jesus the Christ. Once we were people afraid, lost in the night. Then by your cross we were saved, dead became living from your giving. We hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts. Living, now we remain with Jesus the Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.